call this meeting to order. This is our regular uh, schedule. Board of Education. I said that too many times, didn't I? Board of Commissioners meeting. And I'd like to welcome each of you. Uh, you really need the point to be here tonight. I came out these conditions off. I don't know about you, I tried to go home back before this, and there was a car turned over in the creek at the end of Bradley Creek Road, and there was a tree across the road right down below my house. So it was an interesting day, I'm sure, that's the way all over the county. So let's keep those in mind that are out working to, to uh, sing up the mess. Uh, any announcements, gentlemen? All lines are clear to move on. We're going to have a moment of silence. Let's stand. After that, we'll ask Commissioner Keegan if he would lead us in the pleasure of the I thank Mr. Chairman the approach to remember our manager, his family that suffered a tremendous loss. Uh, it was great to have another little weekend. So, and, uh, okay. Just have a moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Be seated. Chester, it's not quite time for the hearing. We will go ahead and have these wait until you get Technically, you should wait until the time after. I figured you'd say that. I just want to test you. You got something you can do in the interim that we approve. We do. Uh, Mike, you're getting based on it. Yes, we do. Thanks, sir. I say I appreciate our Sheriff's Department. I don't mention Mike people often. Uh, Mike Cramble's here. Uh, every time we meet, we just have to get and break up any fights or anything like that. It's just good to have him, good to have him in the building. Might be their charger uh, Doug Woodward is here. I see Doug in the back. Doug is assuming to speak to Macon County Bill of Rights.
and maybe tell you what they think is happening in the book from pictures. Uh, before we begin, read to me. Uh, I'll pass this around. About 26, 27% of our kindergarten, entering kindergarten students could pass that test. Uh, for the last two years, which is a full year after read to me started, that uh, has gone up to about 51% on average. So, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. I just want to stress the importance of getting books into the hands of our, our children. We uh, work with the Highlands Reading Council to sponsor Dolly Parton's Imagination Library. It's $30 per preschooler per year to provide them with a book that comes in the mail to them once a month until they turn five years old. But every year we have to pay the $30 for them. Right now we're averaging about 800 students or 800 children in uh, Bacon County, preschool children who get the books in the mail. So I'm just here to encourage you to publicly support us and privately, if you'd like. It's, like I said, it's $30 a year to sponsor one child. So how do you remember how much? So you were funded through the community fund through last year? Uh, yes, but I, I do not remember. Do you know how much? much it was last year's amount. Was one thousand seventy nine dollars. That was your community funding. That was your right. Right. The main thing you were turning in, you were not the one to make the decision. Right. Right. I just wanted to. You know what you asked for this year? Uh, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I don't yes. know. <laughs> uh, the request was for uh, twenty five hundred dollars. So that was sponsored by the children. So that's why I was here to come and talk to you about tonight. I appreciate you listening to me. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I can say that I've got a great support. The Reads Me is wonderful. Thank you. I encourage the kids to read. We live in a world that uh, kids don't really have the opportunity to read as much as their computers. Cell phones are going to get the most information in the world. Or, or that's it's available anyway. Thank you, Dave. Uh, that was all I had as far as public comment. Is there anybody else here that wants to speak? It's not signed up. I don't know everybody else can ring, but know why you're here. So, unless some of the reading will talk to us about the weather. Uh, Chester, we're close enough to see if people can do that here. At 6.14, I'm going to use some discretion to go ahead. You okay with that, Chip? I've got 6.16. Six, six so. Oh, well, not mine, probably. Uh, at 5 West Main Street, we'll, hear it. <laughs> declare, we'll declare a public hearing to order, uh, marking that it's 6.16 on Chester's clock. This is Rural Operating Assistance Program, ROAP application. And Ms. Kim Angel is the County Transit Director here. Um, this is, as you stated, the Rural Operating Assistance Program. There are three programs funded under that. Um, it's all state money. This is no federal money. Um, the EdTap program, which is the Elderly and Disabled Program. The Employment, which provides a very small amount for some employment transportation. And um, the Rural General Public, which supports the general public transportation, which is um, passengers who are not supported in the human services don't qualify under any of the other programs. Um, the total amount is $119,497. Once the uh, final budget was released in the state, that, that seems to be the amount that we got allocated. Um, there's a formula allocation, I think. We use this money to, it's all for operating costs, so it covers driver salaries, gas, uh, vehicle maintenance, all sorts of that. Um, and we're here in the public hearing portion. Uh, I'm assuming that might be fine. So, we've got questions, comments.
everybody would have in advance. We talked about the total one ninety four ninety seven. Yes, sir. We have actually already received twenty five percent of that. Just remind me, Kim, this has this has no ties to the regional thing that we're doing. No. This is totally different. This is totally related to making county transit not the veterans grant. Thank you. This is this is money that's allocated through the general assembly of the general budget.
familiar with it so far. Well, we have to play half the board feel it's got the board not had a chance to look at the application, but Bo Brown has applied to one of those positions. And uh, <coughs> I don't know what her paperwork is, but without objection, I'd like to put that on the to the agenda too. Okay. Okay. Go ahead, then. There were two slots and there were two applicants. And I forgot who the other one is too. Thank you. 
rifle, I'm sorry. Um, and it's been completely paid for, uh, bought and paid for by the um, largesse of, of one of the citizens of this county who has demonstrated uh, tremendous uh, tremendous willingness to support our people again and again and again and again and again. And I don't know that they would want to be using their name here in public because I don't have their permission to do so, but I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about. It's, it's already, uh, this, this effort has already raised an enormous amount of money uh, to pursue this dream. But just acquiring an old house is not enough. It, the amount remaining uh, to, be, to be funded is $4 million. That includes a, a one, and I've, uh, I think I told you a little different, but it's, four point, it's ba basically $4 million that needs to be raised in order to uh, add the addition and to do the renovations that are required and to uh, do the improvements that are required and to have the funds to have the facility operate for uh, a year. They want to have a year's money in the bank before they get started. Um, the Department of Commerce, as uh, the chairman indicated to you all, has a facility that takes state money and, um, and infuses it into local government to be uh, in turn infused into this type, this very type of effort. And what they do is, uh, the, the, what, what the statute says is that the money goes to renovate old, uh, out of use, uh, commercial properties uh, to to reinvigorate those commercial properties for the community to create jobs. Uh, this this effort here will create six permanent jobs, at least initially six permanent jobs, and that doesn't include construction. Way more than that, construction jobs for a couple of years as it's being completed. Um, and it, it lists the type of uh, facilities that you are. Uh, that, that are favored, and the top one on the list in the statute, Mr. Jones, I believe, is health care facilities. So this is exactly what the legislature rule. intended. Rule. Rule of health care facilities. As a matter of fact, you know, that falls into this called building reuse. There's three different funds within in that time bracket for five building reuse. And there are at least five people I'm talking to that know more about this than I recognize <laughs> that. Um, and uh, uh, because all of us run into this situation in our lives and need this sort of thing. So sometimes you get to know more about it. So the question had arisen, if the grant's made to the, uh, to the local government and the local government in turn passes that grant along to the, to the hospice house, then what if hospice house doesn't complete? Can the money be clawed back? And the money can be clawed back. But it's a very attenuated possibility um, gentlemen, I'm telling each of you, it is a very attenuated possibility under the Act. It, 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 and, and so the, what we came up with in order to, what Michelle came up with in order to answer that possibility and to get, a, get rid of even the attenuated possibility is that the money would be left in the county bank account until the last money that came out to complete the construction, in other words, to hang the curtains with, to buy the sheets with. That's that is the idea we came up with. So here's the immediate need. The immediate need is that they have about a million dollars raised already. Um, short, just a little bit south of a million dollars they have already. The, the foundation has already. They have to, that leaves them three million dollars to go. Uh, Straight to State Employees Credit Union has given a challenge grant that's got to be matched by another two million dollars, another two million dollars, uh, and that is why, and, and that challenge grant goes away unless this money can be raised fairly rapidly. Uh, so that's why a, a very good way to get this money, and it doesn't have to be in their account, it just has to be available to them. So if, if the county could go ahead and procure this procure this grant, uh, and, and the hospice house, 
cost of doing that is $5,000, which the hospice house is legally allowed to pay on behalf of the county and herewith offers to pay on behalf of the county. And then the county passes that money along to the, to the foundation, but not until the end of the construction project. At that point, when they, when they get the million dollars together, they get another million from state and police credit. Uh, and, and then they're, they're well on their way to raising the full amount of money to, to meet and, and, and make this dream happen. There are, at this time, three hospice operations operating in Macon County. And they are uh, Four Seasons, which is out of Hendersonville, and which is generally recognized to be the premier hospice operation in North Carolina, um, which Michelle explained to me. And I'm not going to, if y'all want to ask questions about why that is, okay. Um, uh, West Care, which is now owned by New Clark, does hospice operations in Macon County. Um, and Care Partners, which uh, of course is now this sister entity with Angel Hospital, owned by Mission, also operates a hospice. How um, does hospice operations in Macon County? None of these entities have an inpatient facility. None of these have a hospice house. There isn't a hospice house west of Ashland. So the idea. Okay, thank you. This tells you what kind of person we're dealing with here. Do you know? <laughs> um, so, in any event. Hospice House Foundation of WC, the plant, this entity, does not, will not operate uh, this house. It does not operate, it does not run a hospice operation today. It, 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 I can't mean, say never will, but it does, it, it, because what they, what their certificate of need is for is to create the house. And then they will uh, lease, I suppose, the facility to an operator. State, when they got the certificate of need, the state, the, the next step in, in general was to send out a request for proposals to, and they had to send it out to all licensed hospice operators in Western North Carolina. So that request for proposals went out to four seasons, Haywood, West Care, Angel, uh, and, any, and several others. Uh, it went out to uh, They got they received back two proposals, one from uh, Haywood and one from Four Seasons. Those were the only two that res responded that they would like to. Now, this isn't like letting a construction bid. It's like, who will come here and operate this facility? Uh, there's no, it isn't enriching that organization. Only two expressed an interest in the, and so the operator of, of the house would be uh, Four Seasons. But it's important to note that the, the home, the hospice house in Franklin will be open to all hospice operators in Western North Carolina. It won't be limited to the customers, clients, patients of Four Seasons, but rather it will be open to uh, the patients of Angel, the patients of West Care, the patients of Haywood, Bryson City, Robbinsville, Michelle said they had two requests coming in from Cherokee and Clay wanting to know if the house was ready yet this week. Uh, so it will be available to all of the citizens of, of our western, probably six counties on the side. Um, so it's not, it, 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 it's certainly available to the patients of the Angel Hospital um, with regard to Highlands Cashers Hospital. Um, the, the other hospital in the county, they had actually turned their hospice license over to Four Seasons, and Four Seasons is now operating the hospice operation that uh, Hounds Cashers was pre previously operating. So uh, we would uh, respectfully request uh, the board to uh, step into the breach uh, and to uh, be willing to accept the grant from the state and pass it along to the hospice center. Thank you very much. Other question, how many people do you just have housing? Twelve. With twelve in the Spanish? It'll, it'll, have, it'll, it'll be able to house twelve people. 
and, and, it, and Mr. Hayes, that breaks down into six terminal people who were, and I'm just going to have to state it in layman's terms, people who were, who were gone within a, a couple of days. And sometimes people who are in hospice can go in and out. Uh, they can be in for a, they can be on their own for a while, and then they go into the hospice house and then they're back out. Hospice is taken care of at home. That's generally considered people that have six months or less to live. And there'll be six, there'll be six rooms for those people and six rooms for the people right at the end. I realize that we should have something much bigger than that. I've been to a lot of the meetings of the family show. I'd like to give you a little play. You've asked for the motion to move on. I'd like to move on. Second. I've got a motion to second to uh, state that. Well, I think in this particular situation, the administrative roles, you don't just receive the money, you'll have some administrative roles that you'll have to serve, as you do with any grant that's uh, providing some money. And I think it is important to uh, slow down at this moment and realize that, that that is something that needs to be taken care of really quickly. The county manager probably needs to be uh, tasked with making sure we've got somebody that can uh, handle those administrative roles because if they're not properly handled, then uh, that creates problems. Okay. You've got a doctor eyes across your teeth. So the motion is that we participate in the application process uh, with Hospice House Foundation by WNC. In order to explain this a little bit, we need to talk about the, this process is a fairly new one. It was reported uh, in a she was born in January, so it's only seven, eight months old. And it replaces what used to be the rural centers. It's, it's in the North Carolina Department of Commerce. <coughs> Under this, there are three different areas that they award grants, and the legislature appropriated several billion dollars for this. And so we, there's, there's uh, 15 of us in that committee, and we meet periodically. Uh, it's been, I think we just had our fourth meeting this year, so it's every couple of months we meet. And the grants that are applied for up to a deadline, I think there's a deadline in about two weeks. Is that right? Could we have a meeting? And, uh, so we need to jump on it if you're going to get in this. But if you don't, you'll just miss the next, the next cycle about two months later. Yeah, there's some, there is some uh, critical urgency to it because of making sure that it's not the only money that has to be put together to, to get this matching grant. But the more you get, the more you get. And that's, and just so you know, it's, it's, it's something that's funded by the legislature. It's not like if you miss this deadline, the money's going to be gone. It's not an annual thing. We meet again every couple of months, meet Raleigh and uh, consider the application to come in. I think, you're, I think the fact that this board, uh, presumably, is going to support this endeavor is going to give it some uh, it, it, some movement that, it, that you've been needing. It, I can say this without being afraid. People, people give it boost. Yeah, and, that's, and they need a boost. They need a, they need a boost uh, financially uh, from the community uh, as much of a boost as you possibly get financially money coming in. Said is that the people he was hospice and then we should have first do that by Charlie Yes, we are. Well, it's, uh, it's for the family, it's not only for the patient, who, like Horrible said, may be just you know, terminal and not last long, it's for the family. It's just as much for that family as it is for that patient. So, those of you who've been to Highlands, Jimmy Tate has certainly been there. I've been, I've been to the house in Iceland. Uh, you have, you've been to Care Park? Yes, sir. And it's, uh, if you want to, uh, you know, and it's, it's, you'll it's, find out it's much for the family verbal. I mean, yes, the patient's are and it's in a home <coughs> setting. You'll never know you're in a hospital. I read the room with an angel medical center for the hospital room. You try to, but you can't do that. You just can't do that. I mean, we've done all we could to make it feel. I didn't want to say that, Mr. Bell. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you do everything you can to make it a home environment. So. My hat's off to Michelle Alders and these folks over 10 long years who kept, who kept at it and we'll make it. We'll, we'll get it done. Because it's, it's a good thing for the for Maconians and, and the district and everybody that lives in the family council. It's a good thing. So thank you. 
I wish that we had the whole board here to hear this. That would really uh, pump up the enthusiasm with it. Sometimes they uh, got to get low on their enthusiasm. And this is good for them. Thank you so much. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 4 4 <laughs> and <laughs> extension. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you for coming. I, I can say this now that you know the board passed that. I didn't influence them anyway. I look forward to seeing the application on the other. Good luck. We went back a year or so ago when we were on that bus drive and told you guys to support that. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Thank you. And I know the community is going to involve in your support also. That's going to help. What, what is your uh, next filing deadline? Uh, you know, no, I think it's November fourth. November fourth. Yes, two three weeks. Yeah. Got well, you can see the have the applications done. It just has to be. There, there will be a need for a very brief.
hear a motion and a second to discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion is unanimous. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Community funding. Okay, the community funding pool. Um, I have served on the community funding pool for many years. Um, it's been in existence for at least 10 years, maybe 12. Um, I wasn't on it when it first started, but came on fairly soon. The amount of money allocated by the Board of Commissioners for nonprofits through this funding pool has not increased since we started. So it's $50,000. This year we had 15 agencies apply for a total of $94,500. So clearly we could not meet all of those needs and our recommendation reflects the fact that we are only at asking for your recommendation of the money that was allocated to us at 50000 I would request that you consider increasing that amount of money. Um, you had Diane Cotton from Read to Me, and the library is very involved with Read to Me as well, as you might imagine. We are also interested in getting books into the hands of young children, and in fact, everyone. We want to get books in the hands of everyone. Um, but the Read to Me program is a very important program, but we simply were not able to fund that program. And part of the reason is we simply don't have the funds available. So I would respectfully uh, request that you consider um, allocating more money to meet the needs of nonprofit agencies who work very hard in the community to satisfy some of the needs that aren't met through local or state or federal government. So the total uh, number of agencies that we're recommending funding is 10 agencies at $50,000. Uh, $50, I believe you have a list of the, the agencies that we're recommending. Um, I'd be happy to leave those out if you want. Or uh, Other than that, I'm just asking for your uh, approval on the recommendation from the uh, Community Funding Pool Task Force. <coughs> which has met and reviewed all of the applications and made some tough decisions. On the reach request, Karen, the 10000 was that, mm -hmm. does that go to operations or does that go to the building program? It, that one goes to operations. They're all worthy of They are. They are indeed. Um, we're very sad that we're not able to, to fund all of those um, agencies primarily we're looking at a lot of health and human services needs um, you can see that um, kids place reach um, the community care clinic of Highlands Cashers Angel Medical Center CareNet a lot of the projects a lot of the nonprofits that we're recommending funding for are to meet basic needs in the community there are a couple of um, grants in there, uh, allocations in there for education and cultural projects, but the majority are health and human services. That's where we see a really strong need. Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the community recommendation. I know it's not an easy, an easy job, and they hash back the bill. They don't take our decision or politics out of this. so that you could see some of the need. Um,
Right. The total requested was 94500 but we did not recommend allocation on that. But we kept it at the 50000 that has been allocated to us as part of your budget. Yeah. And this is dividing up that 50000 Exactly right. I do think it's, it's good information for you all to know how much other agencies are requesting. Just so that was really just for your information. Yeah, sorry, didn't mean to I confuse the issue. Right I apologize, but, uh, no problem. For the discussion, questions. I would say, Karen, I think your your, uh, your request is valid. That has been that amount has been static in the past dozen years. I think that if my memory serves me correctly. I think that was started in about. 2000 or 2002. Yeah. 2003. 2003. Okay. <laughs> so uh, it's been around a while. <laughs> just imagine we've already got the budget set this year. Obviously, maybe if we could look at what percentage of our budget that represents, maybe we can do a little bit of a possibly able to see if we might consider it. And all the rate of maintenance is up. Uh, really, we might be able to fix it. I believe the commission stepped up one time before. We did. For how much? Several of you gave um, different amounts. Um, I think whatever cash you had pocket that day. Well, I mean, that's great, yes. I yes, you did. Um, and I don't know if you yeah. didn't mention that or not, but everything that gets donated to read to me is this tax deductible, tax deductible donation that we're under the Rotary umbrella as a nonprofit. So, as individuals and business owners, that all of you are, um, you know, it would be great. And the $30, $30. we don't charge any of that. We don't. She didn't, she, it's thirty dollars a year for a child. We don't charge the parents that. That anybody can sign up for free as soon as their child's born in the hospital. They get forms, and we go out to the community constantly to get more kids signed up. And out of the eight hundred that we currently have enrolled, we've graduated over a thousand, which means they've aged out of the program. So um, it's something that that's the Dolly Parton's one tier of what we do. We'll be at Pumpkin Fest, at Halloween in the Park, and to give out books and, and other things in the community that. Discussion that we're going to move on from the labor reform. But one thing that we've noticed that where this money goes is these organizations are there are a lot of volunteer hours, so the dollars we put into there are multiplied many times because you're not in every case paying people to do these services. You get people that uh, might with reach and need uh, lots of volunteers, place, yes. a lot of volunteers. So it, it makes our tax dollars. I was going to say it maximizes the 50000 that's allocated from tax revenue and um, really um, the volunteers who are part of those programs make a huge difference. Um, it also can provide some leveraging for those organizations um, when they go out and look for other donations or grants. So um, it's, we really appreciate your, uh, your funding for those agencies. Here you all in favor of the approving the allocations as presented totaling $50,000 if you were to get that high. Thank you very much. Thank you for the meeting. I'll be sure to do that. Thank you. Uh, the next thing, Ms. Ramsey, we had Ms. Margaret Ramsey, but the chair was informed that Ms. Margaret wasn't going to get out the weather today. No, I was there with her this afternoon, and, and she did apologize, and, um, and I do come for you today to, to expressly thank you for your previous support of declaring November as Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. Um, as you know, our family lost my sister-in-law to pancreatic cancer. It's a deadly disease. Um, you have the proclamation before you, but before we sign that, if I could just look at my notes and focus, you know, I'm, maybe I can get through this. Um, Several things about pancreatic cancer I think you really need to be aware of. The first being that it's the fourth leading cause of cancer deaths in the U.S. It's in the bottom of the top ten cancer killers for funding, for research. There's no screening for pancreatic cancer. Um, pancreatic cancer is expected to be the second leading cause of cancer deaths in 2020. And unfortunately, with no screening, and with no symptoms that are truly representative of, you can say specifically, this is for pancreatic cancer. Um, 
I think a lot of families in Macon County will be like ours and be affected, unfortunately, by pancreatic cancer. Um, many other cancers in the top five are declining. However, pancreatic cancer is on the rise. And I do believe that we need to address it. Hence the reason that we partner with PanCan um, to, to bring before you this evening the Pancreatic Cancer Awareness um, Proclamation. Um, I will tell you that the treatment options for pancreatic cancer are very minimal. And with, like I said previously, no screening method, um, we are, it's really crippled also by the lack of research funding. So pancreatic cancer is nasty, and we all need to be aware of it. Because if you're not an advocate for your family to try to follow up with any of the symptoms of maybe a backache or um, some other symptoms that you can find on our website, if you're not an advocate for your family, I'm just afraid that one day you might be one of these members that are being represented. As commissioners, we're coming before you and we're asking that, um, I'm going to pass out in just a second a little bookmark, and there's a website on BIRD, meaning Girls Raised in the South with Attitude. And that's what she had. We had her for two years after being diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. Most people die within the first five years. 93% of, of, or 94% of people with pancreatic cancer die in the first five years. And that is because usually by the time someone finds out about it, it's so already in late stage that there's no hope for that family. Um, we, am, we invite you to join us. We're, we're going to be celebrating on November 15th a Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Rally. It's going to be held at First United Methodist Church. We are just now finalizing the details, or otherwise I would have given you something today. It will be posted on this website, and it will be hopefully in the papers. Um, so we do ask if you would support us um, and come to the rally, if you would wear purple in the month of November because purple, yes, I have I have tutus that I can bring to the rally and I will get some of you to wear those. <laughs> just ask uh, some of your previous commissioners. Um, also just help us increase awareness tonight by passing this resolution. And we do thank you for your consideration. I'll give a motion to approve. So Motion and second, Mr. Bills. Uh, motion I hate. Any discussion? Other folks in our community now is this will tell you that affected by pancreatic cancer. We sit here tonight that I have a very dim outlook. If anything can happen to us, we know the truth. I know of two folks in our community right now who's been diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And uh, you just named the surgery they do with the whipple surgery, yeah. which Diane had. Yeah, and we yep. just went through that, and uh, you just can't make up for how serious that is. So, you know, this, uh, this family and I have had a lot of things that they can't come to. It's a very good thing. And we'll put on a purple juice, we're going to do it anyway. Yes, sir. And we do appreciate your support. Any yeah, 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 discussion on the motion? Not on paper, say aye. Motion passes, Mr. Decker. Thank you. Ask no, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Decker gave me two copies, one that put back in our minutes, and I was asked to present you with one, Tracy. So we'll do that. And for the record, I can say her name. This is Teresa Ramsey. So that's my pleasure. So we'll do that. To you on behalf of our board. And thanks for your work. We appreciate it. We appreciate your support.
and the chairman. Let me see that just a minute. One of the most used Appalachian Trail guidebooks that there ever was. This started back by a fellow by the name of Dan Bruce who started hiking the Appalachian Trail and keeping data and wound up hiking the trail eight years. The ATC is out of Harper's Ferry, West Virginia, and I've been receiving some emails. Miss Wallace, I think you're on that board downtown, right? I've been receiving some emails, and I was thinking that we were going to have one of the representatives come up here and say something about it, because I got an email about it wanting some support of uh, what they're doing here in town. And uh, basically, people who hike that trail, it's 2,175 miles long, and it takes about five to six months to hike. People come out here on this trail to get away from life, to get away from regulations, to get away from aggravations. Every one of them goes by a trail name. They're not Bill and Tom and George. They're grasshopper, they trail, tree climber, what have you. So many of them you hear go by the name of solitude or solo or solace or alone is because they want to get out here and just get away from things. In 1972, I believe it was, I went to work for the Forest Service back when the Appalachian Trail was not known about too much about local people. And the job I had was to carry a backpack with some food in it and some tools including a little home light chainsaw about like this and keep that trail cut back with overgrowth. Well, it basically seems to be that uh, the Appalachian Trail has tried to get a, I mean the Appalachian Trail for service has tried to get a toehold for years. Regulations, and you're probably not going to like what all I've got to say. I believe that things sometimes are better left alone. So, Several years ago, I had Bill Van Horn come talk to me about the Appalachian Trail. I wanted to make Franklin a gateway to the Appalachian Trail. And we were the first one. And so, in the explanations that I understood, this was going to be something that had to to bring business into our town. My friends, for 30 years or more, I have worked with hikers bringing people into town. I probably have brought more than 100,000 people to make the count free of charge. And so, real quickly, after it became a, a gateway community, we were required three things to do. Number one is have some kind of a celebration, which is any of you ever heard of the April Hiker Food Bash? I started that uh, back in 2004. And I told them, I said, well, you know, if you need that, let's do it. Look at page 19 if you want to see our advertisements or anybody else wants in there. The next thing was, we were supposed to, let's see, it was to have some kind of uh, knowledge that they shared with people what the trail was about. And I think the trail of the classroom was introduced and it was, what was it, one more? But anyway, first thing you know, and what I'm seeing is coming about here, they've got a board here in town that's starting to make regulations. And 30 years I've put in out here trying to bring people to make the county as tourists. And if you would like to check at this and see it's one of our top tourist attractions now, is the Appalachian Trail. Well, I don't think regulations is what these people are looking for going up and down the trail. And somebody says, or well, one of them sent me an email and asked me if I would uh, go along with it. And I said, well, I didn't say nothing, I didn't ask you. I just, in my mind, I think that 
These people have been coming through here for years. They know how to get here. And I think that uh, I got one that said that they were trying to start a website to tell people where to stay to and the services they can get. And this is the number one guidebook that's always been there. Now, if you're going to take off, today I guess you use GPS. But you used to, you used a random McNally Road Atlas. You didn't go over there to somewhere else. The ATC has got a website, in my opinion, all right, from everybody I talked to, that hikers hardly ever look at. Now, do you hear exactly? They hardly ever look at. It. And the reason is, every page on it won't money. Won't donations for this and donations for that. I don't think that in this book right here that it asks for any money. So, they're downtown now saying that uh, they want the commissioners to support their board down there. Anybody know who Linda Sloat is? Linda Sloat of the town? I think we counted 18 through hikers that come to the last event they had down here on Main Street. Yet thousands of dollars was put into tourism on it. I tried to help the town by bringing one of the biggest speakers that ever spoke, and his name was Warren Doyle, well known for the hiker community. And when he left, he said, I won't be back again. Gene Esty is the oldest man living that hiked the trail in 1951. Now, Earl Schaefer hiked it the first time in 1949, but I brought Gene Esty here twice. And He's an icon on that trail. People won't seek the tears from him. They want pictures from him. And I just feel like that this guidebook right here is what the people need. Whatever they're doing downtown, it didn't work for them to slow the work. I don't tell these hikers what to do. I go up there free of charge and give them a ride into town. Most of them stay all night here. I took them to Rotary if any of them's been there. Was you there in the morning that I took people over there and they held up the seats where they spent over eighteen hundred dollars here? One of them did and nine hundred dollars or seven hundred. We thank them all for doing the money. Yeah. Okay. This is what's happening. This is the kind of money that's coming in here. And all I hope that those folks are doing, I was really wishing that one of them come up here. The only reason I'm bringing it up tonight. This may be my last time sitting up here. I don't know. I'll come up here and say goodbye if I'm voted out. If I'm voted in, I'll leave another four years ago. They never have come up. That's why I'm bringing it up again tonight, bringing this. But the information, I mean, I could throw in some things like this. Is ATC working for people? If, let's go back in the history books. Franklin D. Roosevelt's Vice President Rockefeller got $5 million for that road to be put through the smoke. Are any of you aware of that? Okay, there was one stipulation that they had that there would never be a charge into that park. Now, every other national park you go into is charged for it, correctly. But guess what? If you're a hiker now, three years ago, they just put a tax on you. And when you go across that Fontana Dam, if you've not got a uh, permit to go in there that costs you $20, it's a $500 fine. Now, what's the ATC doing for these people? I think they told trying to get us once it to become a greenway, if we'd sell this for five hundred dollars up to twenty five hundred dollars, all the hacker businesses around town, would we sell them a subscription to well that's gonna take care of everything with the toothache. They just do give them a sticker, go on go. I said, I've been giving these stickers away for ten years. Showing people that we're hiking friends. I just feel like that there's a lot of years that's been put into promoting hiker tourism and our town is being jeopardized right now here by this board that's going to regulate people on how to hike a trail and what to do. Because they're going to come in here and pay them more attention just exactly like they did them 18 people come to that last trail convention they had in town. So friends, for what it's worth, this is what I mentioned to you about two months or so ago. We've got uh, one of these books, if you don't mind, hang on to it. They, they, they call me Tide Wad Haven with the price of $16.95 a piece on the back of it. I sell them books right there, so, of course, you can't sell them something like that. 
<laughs> but anyway, we'll pay you back. <laughs> no, I want you to keep them as a souvenir. But uh, if you look in these books, it tells you where both of our outfitters is at. It tells the motels and the deal discount rates to the hikers. It tells us how to hike the base that I throw for them. It tells about a free ride. And I think the town is sort of because I want to go along with the past and after talking with Kim, trying to get a ride to up there on the mountain with her, but I mean that's I could tell her that's me to get a path on the ride with her and ride with me, all right. But uh, I feel like that we need to let the hikers come in here and enjoy it yourself and go throw it over your own neck and start telling the boys what to do. Thank you. It's got all the trail maps in all the way to Georgia to Maine. That's where all the services is. And I noticed in the newspaper there too that something said today about uh, or one day about where that uh, young man was from the town to give him all the updated information from the town. But I've been giving this information to him for a long time trying to help him. So I know they both got good information to keep it to him. I give it to him too. Thank you, Ron. Appreciate you. Stay with our guests today. Uh, old business, Mr. Grant, we did not have any business for old business. Yes. Okay. That's better. New business, um, consideration of work groups to discuss marketing operations and market management operations in the complex. What kind of manager has that? Uh, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And Seth's here. He can add to it. Basically, what we got is, you know, as we've been working diligently on the construction phase of the Parking Meadows project, and we realize and we start seeing everything come together, and if you haven't been out there, I would encourage you to go take a look, as I always do, but it is really starting to take shape now, and I'm sure after this last rain that that grass will be, you can probably hear it growing out there if it gets warm again, but that project is coming along. Our grading, we expect no more than about two weeks weather cooperating and we should be finished with the grading in the park. We have an estimated start date for building construction of November 1st and as of right now and tonight when we award the building contract for Park Meadows, at this time that will be the fifth contract that this board has awarded and that is all of our big ticket items, our grading, our lights, our fencing, and with the building construction, all of those items have been awarded uh, after this meeting. And at this time, using our projected numbers and looking at the overall budget, we're going to be about 21000 for the good on that project right now. So I would like to report that the project is on budget at this time and it's moving forward uh, great. It's, it's really making some good progress and we're about, we're about the timeline we discussed yes and barring the weather in the winter months and uh, what goes on there you know we can't tell at this time but of course but we will continue to work diligently and, and with all with if any if anybody in the, the county or anybody we've contracted with has been working on this project has anything to do with it we'll we'll be kicking the door down out there come spring time so and as we as we move through the construction, it, it is important. And I've talked with Seth and Mr. Chairman. You and I have talked about we need to start looking toward the future and making Parker Meadows part of the overall recreation infrastructure in Macon County. And I know we had discussed uh, in the beginnings of this project about how that Parker Meadows would offer us economic development opportunities. Um, we, it would lend us to travel ball tournaments and things of that nature that is a strong draw all over the region, the southeast and the country, uh, travel ball tournaments and it, it's a big ticket item out there. And we need to look at not only Parker Meadows Recreation Park isolated, but how it fits into our overall infrastructure with the uh, fields at the Robert C. Carpenter Building and our rec park 
we have, we'll have more than eight fields to offer. I think Seth and I were talking the other day, something like 15 fields. And we need to, we need to define this product that we're going to be advertising to these travel ball tournaments and the promoters. And we need to think about how we're going to market that product. And most importantly, we need to, we need to think about the, how that we're going to marry that with the leagues that we're operating here locally, our local little leagues, our local softball. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we, need, we realize that we need to take care of, of those people first and make sure that, that our kids and our children have, have a, a nice and appropriate place to play. And so there's a scheduling that needs to be looked at there. And the point I'm making is there's a whole host of issues that when the park gets finished that we're going to need to be, we're already going to need to have a plan and that, uh, something laid out there so we can jump right into it. So with that, I, I'm proposing that the board appoint some members from the community to a work group that will discuss these things, uh, the this, this scheduling. We'll talk about uh, who do we need to contact you know, what exactly are we trying to sell to these promoters and travel ball teams that will be coming into the area? Um, again, how does that fit in with Little League? When can we have the tournament? And again, most importantly, uh, how can we make sure that, that our leagues and the, thing, and the leagues that we have going here are able to continue to, to play and, and enjoy that as well? So in doing that, I've looked around and thought and spoken with Seth about some, some members from the community that are heavily involved in our local leagues as well as travel ball teams. And they're, they're the ones out there uh, in, in respect to the local leagues the, that are involved with the Little League and Little League Baseball, Little League Softball. They know the needs of these leagues and, and the, the scheduling. They're very familiar with that and kind of know what we need to expect locally. While also, there's other people out there that are heavily involved with travel ball. They go to these tournaments. They see what uh, they like at these kids. They see what they don't like. They see what works. They see what doesn't work. And if we could get that discussion started with having these two groups of people in the room, as well as representatives from our local recreation park staff and economic development and our recreation commission present as well, then I think we could really get some healthy dialogue started and get some good ideas generated that would be ready to be put in place for when Parker Meadows Recreation Park opens, and that would get us that much more ahead of the game. So with that, I'm proposing that the board would appoint to this work group that will basically come back before the board with their recommendations as they discuss them, as well as present it to the Recreation Commission. Um, at that time to, to endorse these recommendations and use them for a tool uh, for planning purposes as we see fit as we begin discussing the future of not only the Parker Meadows Recreation Park but our recreation product here in Macon County. And the members that, that I would propose are Tommy Jenkins, Billy Van Hook, Todd Inslee, Autumn Corbin, Justin Moffitt, Byron McClure, Gloria Thun and Jerry Moore. And again, uh, Seth and I will be at the meetings, or Seth will be at the meetings, and you know this this can be the community has been very supportive uh, of this project. Members of the communities, and you know it, it's good to hear what they have to say, and the people that are actually involved out there with boots on the ground, both locally and at these travel tournaments. I think they can bring some really valuable perspective and insight to this project in terms of. Uh, how we proceed with it. Do you contact them and see if they want to do it? Yes, sir. They will. Yes, sir. So move. Would this be in the nature of an advisory board? Yes. Yes, yeah. it will so be an advisory board. Let's, let's be clear. I, just full disclosure here. I, I talked to the place off the record commission. We've been talking about and we're going to finish this thing before long. Let's, let's talk about some usage. Now, we're going to talk about grading and <coughs> now let's talk that usage. That's where the idea is came from and I actually went to the Recreation Commission and they approved this idea unanimously. Uh, I let them know it wasn't going around them. This was to ask a very specific group of people for information. And you notice uh, this language, I think, might be noted that in their minutes. It's a work group 
um, not that it's not a performance supervisory committee because you know we have to take applications, go through that whole process, and this, in my estimation, would not be a permanent group. I wouldn't think that. Would it could be five just in nature. Yeah, if it, 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 it becomes a permanent group, then I think we need to seek applications through that process. But these are folks that, and I wasn't involved in the choosing the people. I think these two guys sort of handpicked people who've been involved in this type of thing in our county. And uh, so I would concur with their recommendation. And basically, what they're going to do is, is to bring ideas to the rec commission. Everything will go through the rec commission before it comes before y'all, or to uh, to be actually. Uh, we act on, on those recommendations. And it's just it's involving having every you got there. Uh, yes, sir. There'll be eight. There's one, two, three, four, five. There's eight on there. So it just involves a greater uh, part of our community in this, rather than us making decisions or even direct commission doing it. We're asking people who be involved in, uh, as it involves these. Right. But we're, we're talking about bells and whistles here. Uh, yeah. the, you know, on making a good tournament a great tournament. Um, they, they'll have ideas on, on what they've really liked, you know, at, at various places and what they didn't like. So that'll, that'll enable us to avoid um, some of those uh, negatives and, and accentuate the, the positives. So um, I, I think it's a great idea. And, and so did the Red Commission. They, they, they will support um, having another group kind of work under them. To, uh, to give them ideas and, and we come before y'all. And, and I've talked to Derek and Seth both about this. They can both go out and seek advice for whoever they want to without they don't need our approval for that. But I think what they're asking for is for us to approve this as a as a work group that they can that they can focus for a specific period of time or a specific purpose rather than just go with those individuals one on one or two on two to they can form this group to be together for some period of time.
out and down each year. We've done so in the past. And push here is a DSS. The DSS are getting a little bit of push from their state officials to get this in place to complain. Dugouts that need to be poured. 
and those negotiations have not yet uh, finalized yet, but we will be working to in the very near future. So that change order, that is essentially what that does. It's a $60,000 credit, but we will be farming out two concrete masonry um, workers, this, uh, the dugouts and the 240 feet worth of retaining wall at each cloak.
discussion. In fact, we will be going on. If you're done, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes. Um, we have the consent agenda, which uh, contains minutes for September 9th, September 9th, budget minutes 49 uh, through 57. Any board members would like to have removed from that? If so, we'll speak now or motion to approve those items to be approved. I'd like to vote for the third one. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion passes. We have appointments. Uh, Matthew Department Review Officers, Board of Health, Frank.
haven't even started the budget process. Uh, we're in the pr process of revaluation, which is not being completed, and we're barely into this budget year, much less deciding what the tax rate will be. And I will say this on behalf of all five of us, and many of you don't know part of this, but you know, um, we all agree during our talk about revaluation that when it came time to set that rate, that we would set a revenue neutral tax rate or less. So we do not want in any way this to be a, a, a across the board tax increase to folks. So, uh, so I'm not going to mention the candidate, just want to pick her ad that we mentioned it was extremely misleading, extremely inaccurate, and did not represent uh, the desires and direction of this board. Yeah, and yeah, I think everybody would agree with me. I hadn't heard of an all political agenda speech. All this is a lot. Understood, but that one was really misleading the, the intentions of the city board, and I think that was inappropriate. So, uh, anyway, uh, that's it. Uh, we need a motion to join the close. So, so moving, Chuck. That's for the purpose of preserving the attorney's time. Exactly. Yeah, five list main city at 741. Uh, Commissioner Hayden, do you second that motion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll, uh, we'll be locked. That's what oh, our sports major. Oh, oh it was built to Disseminated that information to you. Uh, 
Uh, and the bottom line is um, that while these are estimates and not written in stone, um, the ratios between the numbers I have do have a great deal of confidence in. And our best option uh, was to uh, seek to uh, obtain the two adjoining properties and move forward with expanded land. Uh, without going all the way through those documents and then some of the information you already know. Uh, the difference to the county over the life of the facility versus if we didn't, if we stopped landfilling and went out of county, uh, was in the neighborhood of $36 million savings to the county over the life of the landfill. Um, that's a pretty big ticket. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of potential savings uh, down the road for the people who make the county. And I feel like that is the way that we should go. Um, there are some additional benefits that I think, um, well, 36 million is pretty impressive by itself. And you say, so by this property, we'll save the county 36 million. How long is that? Well, we have, we have two estimates of time. One is based on our historic compaction rate um, of about, uh, approximately 1,180 pounds per cubic yard. Um, with the volume of airspace that the expanded landfill would generate, um, it's anticipated that that landfill would last 43 years. Um, however, um, since we've made some changes to our operation over the last several years uh, and are doing a better job running the landfill and a more efficient job running the landfill, we've been able to experience compaction rates in excess of 14 to 1,500 pounds per cubic yard. Uh, when I ran those numbers, all the same numbers, and just changed the compaction rate to 1,400, which I felt like was conservative, uh, the life expectancy of the landfill became 60 years. So 60 years, well, if we go back and just say, just develop, just develop the land you got now. If we were in more land. Okay. Then what, how long is it to last? Um, under the estimate provided by our current, our, our historic capacity rate, uh, that landfill would last 16 years. At the increased capacity of 1,400, I'm sorry, not increased capacity, at the increased compaction rate of 1,400 pounds, uh, that becomes 19.7 years. So the difference is 19.7 using the current footprint, the expanded footprint, in addition to the properties you recommend, you would run that to 60? 16 years. 16 years. Yes, sir. <coughs> Another thing, Mr. Chairman, will explain that to so make sure I understand that if you went ahead and just developed this, what we have now, and come back later <coughs> and purchase this property later, then it would almost be impossible to incorporate that into the land. Absolutely. Um, if you if you would mind, uh, it might be easiest to demonstrate on this aerial. Uh, <coughs> You see what you and I that out of So our current landfill is kind of narrow. And kind of to the Sorry. That's the best my my next looking year, boy. <laughs> so the, the permitted landfill kind of runs through here and then wraps around towards the, the uh, county ground. Uh, and that's set by boundary buffers from, from residences, from roads, from the body of water, from this creek that runs over here. Uh, but it's kind of it's, it's kind of a narrow little turning strip. So by acquiring these two pieces of property, which you just have to trust me, there two pieces of property here, we can basically take this little narrow swag and square it off. And then by the properties of geometry, uh, we realize uh, Fairly significant return on uh, volume of air. So, what was your question? Because I didn't answer your question. I mean, no, my, I was just making a comment that I think in, you had told us one time if you oh, didn't have this maybe. property, you couldn't explain Thank you for bringing me back. So, obviously, if the landfill as it's designed turns this way across this property to, to line up here, so if you if you see the landfill or without going into a big deal about how landfills are built, once we once we build this line here, uh, 
there will be compacted clay that gets compacted every six inches and it can't settle an inch. Um, there will be a liner, a liner system, a leachate collection system, all the things that go into building a landfill. And there will be a dike that's constructed to contain the waste. Once that dike goes in and that liner goes in and there's waste on top of it, that line can't be moved. So if we put, if we're talking about a fairly small area to get that return. It basically runs kind of right here. So if we were to put a berm, thinking three dimensions, a berm here, and then turn around and build another one here, we are basically eating up all the property. So once where we knocked about the properties now and begin construction of the smaller existing landfill, once this line goes in, it's, it's, it's over. There is no, there is no getting it back. Uh, there, there would be no potential. Uh, there wouldn't be enough airspace left on that property to even try to build it. So what's your say on work out capacity um, Our latest, our latest capacity analysis. Uh, for state regulations, we have to do a capacity analysis every year. Our latest capacity analysis gives us 25 months of our remaining life in our current land. Uh, two years. Right at two years. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Uh, Sorry. Uh, so we're to the point now where we've got to start from now. Well, in all honesty, um, thanks to Senate Bill 1492, which I refer to fondly up here, um, when we do this expansion, our permitted landfill will become a new landfill. Uh, to permit a new landfill in the state probably takes three or four years. Uh, we've got two years to get it done. To that end, unless you have more questions. You get a question, Jim? Who makes the issue of this is when we pay for it? Oh, thank you. Yes, I, I definitely should have used that. Um, yes, uh, of course, the Solid Waste Department is run as an enterprise fund, which is almost like a separate business within the county. We're obviously part of the county, uh, but we do not use ad valorem tax revenues to fund our operation in any way. Uh, we operate on the monies that we generate um, through tipping fees, availability fees, sell recyclables, grants, etc. So how much, how much ad valorem tax money will go into first? No, no. Zero. Zero. Um, we will actually be doing a transfer from our retained assets account into a capital account uh, to make these purchases. Uh, the money exists, it will have to be moved, which will be one of the actions upcoming. Um, but it, the money's basically in the bank in the enterprise. Chris, I've asked you this privately, and I feel like I need to ask you this publicly. Uh, an enterprise fund just to explain this. It's a, like a, run like a business. There's no ad valorem tax money. We don't put money into the budget. We basically provide a service and get some revenue from that to operate the service. So let's let's take a, let's say that this is not the county doesn't own this. Let's say this is Chris Stall's landfill. Big sign says Chris Stall's landfill, and that's your enterprise fund, and you're operating it for the fish what you can. Would you buy these two pieces of property to add? Uh, yeah, the first answer is yes, absolutely. Um, in in any type of you know any type of construction project, you know you're well not even construction any type of business, um, you know you want to spend your money wisely, uh, but when you have a chance to spend X number of dollars and see a return on that investment, you know of a hundredfold. Um, that's that's just that's something you do every time, um, and, and and without question, uh, if this were a this if I were the owner of a private company in the landfill business and I had this opportunity, absolutely I would I would purchase these properties to do this expansion. So we've got a savings of thirty six million dollars over the lifespan of this. Yes. That's two thirds of what your budget. Well, 
think the first motion I need to make is for the commissioners to uh, approve a budget amendment. It would be uh, two transactions, two potential transactions, two different numbers, and uh, there would be a budget amendment in connection with each of those uh, proposed contracts. And you might want to mention with respect to contracts, we do each call for uh, an extended due diligence period for the county to make the requisite test and to check things out, make sure that his property, pieces of property are the ones to do. Would you like to see the tail end of that a little bit? Or I will say this is that myself have worked with the deal on to the solid waste department it's let me preface my recommendation is that we've worked on this thing too long we've waited too late as a board we're going to be crunched for time and we all realize that we have to take action to ensure that the next generation has a place to dispose of waste and none of us are happy with what we are about to enter into it's just the fact that this is what we have to do we have to provide a safe place to dispose of solid waste. Based upon that, I make a recommendation that we enter into a purchase agreement as described by Chris Stahl. Motion by Christian Hickman to have a second. I'm going to reflect what you just said. And I'm going to make that second due to I know we got to. But I'm looking down the road and seeing that figure on the recommendation of Mr. Stahl. For us saving the county thirty-six million dollars. You say we need to be the approval of the contract contract that he has he presents to you. Okay. Except we have a motion and a second for discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That vote is unanimous. Now the second piece of property. Yes, sir. Uh okay. Well, let's, let's stay right there on that one for a moment. One of the terms of that agreement calls for the sellers 
to have basically a one-year lease for a portion of that property from the time of closing. I've spoken with Mr. Stahl. That is not a problem to him on his, uh, his end. It also includes what we call a license, which is a right, a possessory right to do some of the property, but a right to use the property so long as it doesn't interfere with what Chris is doing out there in, in his property. And basically, this is for a one-year period. The county, I had prepared a proposed resolution for that agreement, approving that agreement, uh, and I would ask Chris to present that. That's part and parcel of the agreement that you just did. Jim, we have a recommendation of the resolution to make the county title uh, property surplus and approve a one year lease by the same to Charles T. Dalton. So, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. That motion passes. Now, the other question. Yes, uh, this was, it would be my recommendation that the board take an action uh, to enter into an agreement to purchase and sell real property with Mr. Donald Burling and Faye Fortune of Florida uh, for property adjoining MSW landfill uh, in sum of $730,000. And note, Chris, that, that is property and there's also a home yes, sir. located on that and the home would the home would most likely remain, although it would be a home that would be used for purposes for administration. As long as it remains a piece of the solid waste facility, there is no there are there are no love requirements. There are there are some requirements for it being there, but those I mean they won't really interfere with what you're doing with that. Yes. Um, and again, I, I didn't say it with the last one. I feel like I should say it's in here, but this purpose be conditional upon favorable results of the due diligence period. Uh, it likewise contains that roughly a six month period of due diligence. Same type of thing, same terms uh, for the deal. Working this for two years. Uh, this is 
not simply what came up yesterday and being approved today. It's yes, a two-year yes, process. It's been a learning process. As Mr. Hagan said, I would echo that. that uh, I vote for this because it's a savings of $36 million over the life of that project. And that's uh, a that worthy of our I'll say this right here, especially for the news reporters, too. We didn't just come up with this and that. We had explored all options that we could on this each one of us, including Chris a lot of transportation. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say, yeah. signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion passes unanimously. I do have another action. What's that? Um, before I do it, I, I, I want to personally thank you, Joe. Uh, I know this has been this one hell of a process. Uh, I know I know the feelings. I know the justification. I understand. Uh, I appreciate uh, your trust in me. Your trust in my staff uh, to run this department and bring this project about. And I just want to thank you uh, for showing your support. Uh, and uh, for Chris Stahl, the guy, this is, this is horrible. This is worst thing you could have ever done to me. But for Chris Stahl, County employee, I, I definitely think this is the most good of the county for a long, long time. Uh, thank you, Jim. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Any last? Yes, sir. Is that what this is? Is that what this is? No, sir. Chris, I suppose I'd like to thank you for that way. We're putting a lot of faith in you to take care of this project. As I say, we're saving your shoulders for we save a lot of money. You get a lot of years of service out of so 60 years down the road is initially bill said we probably I'll be on the other side of the grass till the end, but at least maybe somebody will look back and say that we've got to do what the best we can. Thank you. You have a fraction to approve this change order to do the yes, for this groundwater stuff? Yes, uh, what, what I just presented to you is a request for a change order. Uh, we have BLE under contract currently to do the, um, um, the not, not the size, but the design and the analysis science. Uh, for the existing phase. Uh, I skipped this earlier. My instructions as we started this, I believe from Mr. Bill, were start working on what you got and start planning for the expansion. To that end, uh, we have uh, we have been we, we entered into a contract uh, a little over a year ago uh, to perform the necessary hydrogeological assessment and study of the of the property. Um, this is a change order uh, for BLE to conduct the same services into the expanded area. Uh, this will be part of the due diligence process, um, but um, this is this is just a change order for them to move it to come back in and do the and continue their services into this new area as part of our investigation into uh, having this approved as a landfill site. Can you have those funds in your budget for you? Yes, sir. Motion to approve. Right. Good motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. All right. Uh, opposed? Motion passes. Right. I'll, I'll just say in closing. I, I'll answer your question again. Uh, I have a total of five different contracts that we will be executing. Uh, the others are don't, don't require the final action. Uh, and I do have the money budgeted for all of them. We're anticipating and I have the money budgeted. Um, and to that end, um, I can now say after this action, uh, we will be on the property tomorrow. Uh, we will begin phase one site assessment. I'll have drill rigs on the property next week. Uh, and will most likely within the next two weeks have uh, the core and start working on the jurisdiction determination. And we're, I got to hit the ground now. I've got, like I said, I got six months to do two years worth of work. So we're going to get started. Thanks, sir. Good job. I hope you won't judge me just on this because I'm, I'm afraid I might fail. We're going to do everything we can. Absolutely. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you, Chairman. Finance.